Hello, welcome back to uh, another late night stream. It's the second one in a row and I haven't really prepared. I'm terribly sorry. I'm a little bit late for whatever reason. Um, I was actually looking for, I will tell you very shortly, I just need to fix this light I think. Let's uh, This is quality streaming right here. This might be better. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it might be better. No, it's still it's still pretty terrible. But hello, welcome everyone uh, back to another stream. Um, I've had fun making these, and I've had fun talking with you so much this week that I figured, well, it's results night, and we we might as well make another stream. And I'm a little bit late. I was gonna start at eleven. And it's 11.04. I was looking for like a party hat or something. Or something festive. Because uh, it's celebration time. Do you know why? Uh, I could let you guess why. But the the chat is so kind of delayed. That uh, I think it would be very anticlimactic. If, we, uh, if I waited for you to guess. Or I could just ramble on like this. And like speak. So maybe you, <laughs> you catch up with me. And uh, I can, in, uh, what do you call it? I can actually adapt to, to the chat and what you say. So guess, why are we celebrating? What are we celebrating indeed? Your birthday? No, it's not, it's not, it's not my birthday. Um, hmm. Let's see if anyone actually gets it. Um, it's something that's happened on the channel. I can give you a hint and uh, we'll see if anyone gets it. Uh, get to liking the video, says Mihailo, <laughs> if you want to. I don't mind uh, anyone liking the video. Part of why I also got, uh, what do you call it, distracted or late, is that I just took a shower, so uh, that's why I was a little bit late as well. So not only the party hat. 4K, yes, 4,000. I have uh, 4,000 subscribers on my channel, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, I think... It's like I've never really counted subscribers before because I haven't really been interactive with um, with all of you, I guess, too much. And my channel has just been like I upload spontaneously when it's Eurovision season and I just make the reviews. And I, I haven't really felt like my channel had a life or so. But lately I've just been seeing like a spike in the subscribers. Uh, and of course, since I'm also, um, what do you call it? <laughs> you don't call it sponsored, but I have like a like a membership on YouTube, so um, I'm like, what do you call it, like verified or, or something like that? I think I think you understand what I mean. Um, and then that kind of also just kind of improved um, my, I guess, commitment <laughs> to, to, actually, uh, to actually having a YouTube channel because there felt like there was actually a purpose to it. Um, and well, there was a purpose before as well. I just enjoy making videos and, and talking about music, but, um, it's it's more than that now I feel and I've I've got like my own little community which is absolutely incredible. There are thirty six people here right now. I mean, why are thirty six people all over the world just watching me talk tonight? I don't know. It, that's that's the thing. I don't know, but it's it's really cool. Uh, thank you everyone for for wishing me so well and, and for congratulating me. It's it's actually really cool. Yeah, four thousand subscribers. Um, I know that a lot of like other channels have way more, but I can't believe like if you put four thousand people in one space at the same time, that that's a lot of people. You know, I wouldn't be able to talk with four thousand people in in one day. It's impossible. Um, so yeah, that that's that's why I think it's so insane. Because if I I were to meet or if I were I were to meet all of you like during one day, I wouldn't be able to because uh, there's like no time to talk with all of you. Um, four thousand is a lot. Uh, Groot for YouTube domination, says Yusuf. Well, we're uh, <laughs> we're on our way, I guess. Um, I've like just this week, I've learned how to stream on YouTube. I never thought that I would be able to stream before in my life, uh, but I actually know how to do it now, which is pretty insane. Uh, you could almost fill an arena with the subs now. Exactly. If <laughs> exactly, we got an arena of people subscribed to me on chat on YouTube. Um, Leon says, I had so much higher expectations for Sober tonight. I mean, her song Habit was such a bop. Um, yeah, we're going to talk some Melfest. I don't know the song Habit. I don't listen to the radio that much, but 
she she claimed that that song was actually famous so um <laughs> but yeah we'll we'll get to that uh, i actually have not well i've watched melody festival on tonight and i have not watched the lithuanian national final tonight and i have no idea what actually won so i'm thinking we're go we're going to get a live kind of check through uh, the actual results of the um, of the Lithuanian final before heading over to what I would consider to be the main story tonight, which is Melfest. Uh, I understand if everyone completely disagrees with that being the main thing that happened tonight, but for me, it's uh, it's the big thing because uh, I'm positive towards Melfest this time around. Let's see if I can manage to... I think if I do this, both of them get smaller. See, I'm learning. I'm learning uh, how to stream. Um, step by step let's make the box a little small you can still see me um, and um, Astron says I'm gonna be sad checking the results so I guess you spoiled a little bit that Petunia didn't win but my expectations weren't really for that anyway uh, if you remember from yesterday watching the stream yesterday Petunia won the Groot selection for <laughs> for the Lithuanian national final so that's that's something um, let's see uh, uh, I regret watching the Lithuanian selection instead of Melo. You should, because uh, Melody Festival was good tonight. You're so pro. Thank you, Yusuf. I, I think so, too. I, I learn. I get better and better. Uh, Sweden fell off this year and a bunch of smiley faces. Oh, the sarcasm. Um, let's see. Uh, how did I do this again? <laughs> Still, I'm telling you, I'm learning on the job here. We got, of course, Eurovision World. Share the screen. Boom. Got it. <laughs> I know how to do this. Uh, of course, this is old. I haven't updated the page yet. I still have it open from last time. <laughs> so I haven't, uh, I haven't opened it yet. And uh, we're going to do that live here. Uh, I'm just thinking, yeah, I think the chat looks good the way that it is tonight. Um, with, the, with the kind of blocks that we have here so you can see the, see the actual text. During the first stream, you, stream, you couldn't uh, see the text. You leave your PC on, what? No, but I put it in like rest mode, um, and the, the websites are still open in the background. Groot is a tech expert. You're, you're n you have no idea. Professional streamer. Got it. Uh, let's see. Eurovision World. And I press F5, and we're going to refresh. Oh, and we get back. Okay, Iceland. Uh, I have not checked any songs from Iceland, but uh, I guess we should just start here. What do we think of Dilja and Bragi to the final? Are we uh, happy? Sad? What What am I supposed to expect? Am I supposed to expect something good or not? Um, I'll give you some time to, to uh, answer that. And uh, yeah, just leave it, leave it like a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Um, and I will move on <laughs> to, to the next... Uh, thing, which is, of course, Melody Festival. Uh, Iceland did right, says Katrin. Okay, that's that's cool. Um, <laughs> and Sean says no. <laughs> okay. Uh, celebs robbed. Haven't heard them. Iceland did a correct choice with... What does it say? Dilja? She was the best tonight. Celebs should have qualified. I'm happy with Dilja. Didn't follow, but people don't seem mad about it. Okay, well, that's that's the main thing. People are not upset. Are we upset about Melody Festival? I'm, I'm not really. Um, if you were here yesterday, you know I have some qualms with... Uh, I don't have qualms with this man over here. I really, really like him. But I have qualms with his song. Um, and unfortunately, I cannot go to the gym tomorrow and pumping royals in my, uh, in my headphones because it's not streamable for another week. How am I now going to be able to walk into the gym and think that I'm a royal and I'm a legend and I'm a rebel and I'll... Yeah. <laughs> oh, the alpha males have to wait another week, unfortunately. But Marcus and Martinez made it to the final. We're going to talk a little bit more about Melfast later, I feel like, because... Um, we'll get Lithuania out of the way later because I'm passionate about Melfast for the first time in, well, a year probably because... This was the first not, uh, first deal tabling that I actually enjoyed from Melfest uh, this time around. Um, Melfest was good tonight, but the script for the show is so bad. We don't talk about the script. That that's 
<laughs> nope. <laughs> it's, it's, no. Uh, didn't watch Iceland, but have listened to all the songs, and yeah, they made the right choice, I guess. Nice. My winner, Casanovas, came last in Mellow, but very good heat. Yeah, um, we're gonna get to that. Um, they should definitely not have got last. Uh, you got 4k subs, you're a royal alpha male now. Yeah, I'm a royal, I'm a legend, I'm a, a rebel, and I will treat all my 4,000 subs royally. <laughs> um, please let Nordman made the semi-final, I like that song. Yeah, but they were so close to make the final, weren't they? Um, Norwegians representing Sweden. You think it's possible after tonight? I think Loreen has competition, but hopefully she has an amazing song to follow up this week. Yeah, um... Uh, I, I kind of felt like I will be mad if, if Marcus and Martinez end up winning Melody Festival one, but after hearing their song and after seeing their performance, no chance I'd be mad. Uh, we're gonna get to that though. Okay, let's see. Drumroll. What happened in Lithuania? Huh? No. Okay, I, I, like you all killed my hopes a little bit because I understood Petunia wasn't going, but surely then Beatrice. Or Ruta Moor. Um, yeah, this was not what I wanted. <laughs> Is this what you wanted? Tell me in the comments. Is uh, Did Lithuania do right, according to, to all of you? Uh, I'll read some comments while I wait for you all to respond to that. Uh, Adrian says, first time I get to watch a Groody stream live. Hello from USA. Hello, yo. Uh, how's it popping, dude? Uh, is that how you speak over there? Probably is. Or I just offended you. Terribly sorry, but welcome to the stream. Um, who is throwing dirt on the script in Melfest? It's so good this year. Finally some edge in the jokes. I'm laughing so much. Some parts of it is good. Some part of it is not. I think it's very kid-friendly at times. Um, I really like Jesper. Uh, I think he's a wonderful comedian. But in this show, half of it is just like... Maybe you'd get me, but I I, I call it bully bumpa humor. <laughs> Maybe you get me if you're if you're Swedish, but yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not really big on that. Uh, I'm a royal. I'm a rebel. Really, is Meredith Brooks for bros? Yeah, what was that? I'm a bitch. I'm a wait. What what's the song? It's called bitch, but I I don't remember. <laughs> and something I'm a mother as well in it. I think. Yeah, you need to quote the the lyrics to uh, Meredith Brooks there. In the chat. But yeah, I agree, Jorgi. <laughs> uh, hi, Groot. What do you think of Never Give Up, aka the winner of Melfest 2023? Wait, which one is Never Give Up? Is that Maria Sur? Is her song called that? Uh, it's fine. Uh, it's, pre it's pretty good, but um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want it to win, I'd say. Amber says, completely expected the results from this heat of Melfest. Yeah, I did too. Um... The two qualifiers were my faves of the night for me. The hosting was not great, but the songs and staging were really good. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think the hosts are not an issue, but the script is, uh, I'd say. For me, at least. Uh, about Lithuania, the jury breaking the tie is the most upsetting thing, not the result per se. Oh, we're gonna get to the result then. Uh, Lithuania, I like the song, but this may not be the best result. Disappointed with Lithuania. The disbelief, I agree. Rutamur wanted to tell about... We're gonna get to the results. I'll leave, I guess, the chat... Uh, I'm not gonna read all of these because you, you've said a lot of things. Let's just... Um, yeah, Jorgi quotes. I'm a... Yeah, the the B word. I'm not sure if if, the, if YouTube will block me if I say the word. I don't know how, how offensive it is. I'm a lover. I'm a child. I'm a martyr. I'm a sinner. I'm a saint. Yeah, that's that's right. Good, you got it. Um... Okay, let's let's actually see the results here. So uh, we're gonna start from the bottom, like we always do. Is this ordered in? I think it's ordered correctly. Uh, and in last place, Sparnai. Now here's the thing I'm thinking: Do I still have the results from our? Hello there. I got the results from our voting yesterday. If if you were here for the chat yesterday, awesome that you're back. But we did a voting thing where basically. Uh, all of you were a televote, and only me <laughs> was a jury vote. So basically anything that I liked just kind of got boosted up the ranking. It was a very unfair system, and I will have to reconsider it for the next time we do something similar. But I'm going to compare the actual results with what we made. So you can decide whose, uh, <laughs> whose results were better, the actual ones or the group selection ones. Uh, 
two, one thing that they both have in common, though, is that Spud and I was lost. Um, and they got, I guess, five points here. Uh, and they got nine from us, but the voting system works a little bit differently. I feel like I have to check just... Okay, so it's total tele-jury. Okay. Total tele-jury. Let's see. So they got three points from televote and two points from the jury. And I guess... Um, <clears throat> Everyone got at least something, so they did like the 1 to 12 system, uh, I would guess at least. So three three points from Televote and two points from Jury. But Spud and I got 12 points from the Televote in the in the semi, didn't it? So that's that's odd. Do What You Do got five points as well. Two points from the Televote and three points from the Jury. Do What You Do came... Wait. I'll have to... Um... I'll have to uh, actually write down an order here so I don't have to count every... Um... <laughs> Sorry, this is terrible streaming right here. I should have done this before. I didn't think of it, but hey-ho. Um... Okay. So, Do What You Do got 6th place from us. Um, tied 5th, but uh, the tie break put it... Uh, sixth behind a, another song uh, Which we'll get to so I think maybe this one was a bit low I guess um, I'd say but um, Yeah, I mean <laughs> It is what it is. Uh, I don't think it had any chance of winning anyway But I think ninth is a bit low for, for a song that actually had a pretty ambitious performance had a catchy hook to it I think it's a it's a bit harsh. There are songs that I would consider to be worse in this selection, but I guess it's not really supposed to be towards the top. Uh, let's see what we got next. We got Need More Fun, which got one point from the Televote. I expected that to be like a hit with the Televote and the juries not to like it, but uh, the juries gave it five, Televote gave it one. Uh, Need More Fun, we placed that one in fifth, so that was the one that was tied with Do What You Do. Um, but won the tiebreak because uh, our televote liked it more than our jury did. <laughs> um, so yeah, that one was 8th, okay. Uh, and then Rumor was 7th. Got 7 points from the televote, that's a lot, and 1 point from the jury. Rumor was our ninth. so I think... I mean, all of the songs here down, like the bottom 4 here, uh, were in the bottom 6 of ours, I guess you could say. So maybe not too uh, surprising, I guess. Um, grab a drink if you want because it might be a long night again. I'm gonna try not to do three and a half hours this time though, but uh, might be a long one, so grab a drink if you want. I have to do that anyway. Uh, Rumor 7th got seven points from the Televote, so that really saved it. Um, but we placed it ninth together, all of us. And in sixth place, we got Schauksmas with 10 points, so that one was pretty liked by everyone, I guess. Six points from Televote, four points from Jury, and we had it seventh. So pretty similar, and we had it 0 0.5 points behind uh, the tied fifth place. So I feel like there is like a general kind of consensus with uh, <laughs> with what people think about the songs here, I guess. Um, but yeah, so Schauksmas sixth, I think that's that's pretty fair. I mean, I don't think it should be too much higher, but I don't think it should be towards the bottom anyway either. So solid middle mid table song here. Uh, let me think about me finished in fifth. And we had that one fourth. So basically, if I'm not giving away too much, we've we have I think like we have the remaining songs the same, but the difference is that we kind of put stay a lot lower. So <laughs> um, yeah. But let me think about me. We gave it 14 points and we put it in fourth place. Here we got 11 points, five from televote, six from juries. Seems about right. I mean, it's top half. Uh, it's very liked on this website. I see five stars. Uh, let's see what was in fourth. Petunia was in fourth. Okay, tied. I see here. Four points from the televote is a bit sad, I'd say. Seven points from the jury is, I guess, well, it should get 12 points from the jury, but you know. So Love of My Life was our combined first place, uh, mainly due to just me giving it a 10 <laughs> and not giving anything else a 10. But when I looked into it, it also got the highest televote average in our voting of eight. So, and that was higher than everything else. We have, uh, let me think about me and so low on 7.5 from your televote. So, um, so uh, I mean, 
both of all all of us agreed that Petunia should have won this, except for the Lithuanian voting system. But fourth place, I think that's cool. That's that's really nice. I mean, fourth place is still good. So um, happy for happy for her. Um, oh, big gap upwards. Beatrice third only, sixteen points, eight from juries and eight from televote. Um, like a movie, we had it second with sixteen points as well. Hey, <laughs> look the how it, how it can end up. Um, but yeah, sixteen points, pretty big gap from the top three down to the rest of them. Um, but yeah, so all of the top three points from both categories, like Taliban and Jury, were the top three um, in the final, I guess. So like a movie, finished in third. Uh, out of these top three that we have in the final, I would probably mostly support like a movie, but they didn't go for that. Hey ho! And then we got Rita Moore. Oh, they got the same amount of points. Hmm. And they got Jury twelve. So with the group voting system, Solo would have been the winner because we went for the televote to be the tiebreaker, but here they went for the jury being the tiebreaker, which is interesting. Uh, we ranked Solo in third in, in our voting with 15, so only one point behind Like a Movie and three points behind Petunia. Uh, and we ranked Stay in eighth, <laughs> so all the way down here, below Salksmas and above Rumor. So, oh, hey-ho, how the tides can turn, I guess. Um, Another national final of my favorite not making it, and I guess a lot of yours as well, because it wasn't really a popular choice within the chat either. Uh, but hey-ho, that's that's how it is. Um, okay, should we just kind of summarize a little bit? I, I'll read some comments while I'm asking you a question. Will Lithuania qualify from the semifinal? We, do, we don't know all the songs, of course, but will it qualify or will it not qualify? What's your general feeling right now? Tell me in the comments, and I'll be reading a little bit in the meantime. Um, <clears throat> Steve seems to remember that he was dragging down the average. You absolutely were, <laughs> absolutely. Ivanic missed yesterday, but you're here today, so welcome. Um, Monica did a revamp. The song is a bit different because people like the ending of the song so much. She did a chorus this way and some slight instrumental change. That's cool. I should check out the new version then. Uh, that's, that's nice. Uh, Monica performed well, and I like the Lithuanian inclusion, but it just can't click with the song. Yeah, I'll, I'm pretty much similar. Um, yeah, absolutely. You count as a whole jury, so don't worry. Your voting system is right. No, I think I think the televote needs a little bit more of a of an impact or influence on on the overall score. Um, maybe if we do like the twelve to one system the next time, because technically, if I'm a jury, I could just give my favorite song ten and everything else a one, and my ten will automatically win. So. <laughs> um, I agree with the official results more. Good on you. Um, the public didn't like Need More Fun since the very beginning. Really? Hmm. I didn't know. Uh, it seemed like a very like happy, inviting song in that sense. But uh, Amber says, Do What You Do was my winner. I did not expect it to do well, but honestly, ninth is a little low for my taste. I agree with your take on its results for sure. Yeah, uh, ninth is really low. I think that that's a bit harsh, if I'm going to be honest. I don't really get how Rumor finished so high. I think that one was very underwhelming, I guess. Moonbeam not running out of SIM cards. <laughs> oh yeah, there's like this SIM card thing here, I guess. Um, my winner of the final was Paulina, but my winner of PIN as a whole was eliminated in the quarterfinal. I don't know those songs. Um, but there's something there called Sauped by the Pixels, I see. Uh, sorry for Petunia. Her song had some really interesting harmonies. Absolutely, the backing vocals add a lot of a lot a lot of character to that one, and I just love the way that the song moves forward. Um, Petunia's song was excellent in my opinion. I agree, Nils. Uh, I really don't know how I feel about jury being the decisive factor in a tie. Seems like a recipe for disaster. I agree. Uh, juries should never be a tiebreaker uh, because juries have more of a tendency to you know maybe get bribed than an entire audience of televotes. Yeah, I'm, I'm very skeptical usually like towards the whole concept of jury voting. Like if you want a jury voting, it should be a very big group having a say. Uh, but I get that it's difficult to put together, but I've seen like there are national finals where it's basically one person who's a, a jury for for that jury group or whatever. And that just, it just feels wrong for me. Um, it's very easy to bribe and, and influence in certain ways. Maybe you were really nice during a during a chat you had with the with that juror before. 
Maybe you shared a drink the night before at the pre-party. You never know, and you get influenced. Um, jury tiebreakers are always bad in my opinion. For example, when Circles beat Superman on the tiebreaker in Macedonia, even though Superman won the televote by like thousands of votes. Yeah, and especially like when you win by a big margin in the televote, then that should have some impact, I think. Um, yeah, I agree. Borderline says Francesco, Superman being on ESCH is something that would haunt me in my nightmares. Sorry, okay, I don't know Superman. I think it could qualify. Uh, love how they decided the winner by jury when the semis are fully televoted. Yeah, ironic, right? <laughs> uh, but the televote of this Lithuania NF was close though. It doesn't seem like you can see that, uh, at least on this page. But I I'll take your word for it. Uh, some people don't think it will qualify. Um, Lawrence says, I can't believe that the Lithuanian broadcaster didn't take our chat's votes into consideration. I know, right? We should be a separate group here <laughs> with our votes. And then, uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, then Like a Movie would, no, Like a Movie, Solo would have won if, if they did that. Um, depending on how much influence we would have, of course. If we had like 500 points to give out, then we could probably save Petunia. <laughs> um, it would until... Some people, a lot of people say that it will qualify. Interesting. This semi-final is terrible, but since it's 100% televote, I doubt. Uh, they're in the weaker semi. I don't know what the semis look like. Should I should I take a look? Because we've got a bunch of songs so far. Uh, how do I even get to... Are they semi-2? They are in semi-2, okay. Uh, we got Because of You, we got Breaking My Heart, Bridges, DGT, Duja, Stay, Car... Yeah, this... <laughs> Are all of the good songs in semi one? N not all of them, but most of the. Yeah, most of the favorites, I guess, are in semi one. You're right. Um, but we still got a lot of songs to go through here. But maybe I'm not having the biggest of hopes to songs from like San Marino and. I mean. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm not gonna be prejudiced about this, but. Um, we'll, we'll see. It, it's looking a little bit weak right now. I think Estonia is for sure making it. Um, Romania has a really good shot as well. Something that makes me happy is uh, Slovenia might actually have a shot when when the semi looks like this. <laughs> One can hope. Um, she will qualify for sure. SF2 shapes up to be quite weak. Borderline qualifier is my guess. Maybe. It truly depends on running order. I'm not sure like how much we you should really take into running order, but I guess you're right. Like if it, I guess I guess we'll see. Uh, Ruta won by li less than like 200 votes. Oh yeah, Ruta won the televote, so yeah, okay. This song doesn't stand out enough to be qualifying a 100% telesemi. Ruta Moore would have been guaranteed. I think Ruta Moore would probably have made it, yeah. And I think Like a Movie would have made it as well. Unsure about Petunia, but uh, I would have wished for it. Um, let's see what else. I feel like it won't qualify, but things happen, so I'm not sure. Yeah. Could be a borderline qualifier at best. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think it will be towards the top of the qualifiers, but uh, yeah. Not a filler song getting fourth in tele. Oh yeah, rumor. <laughs> uh, I mean, it might with Diaspora, good running order, Gustav level luck, and if there aren't too many standouts. Yeah. How were the odds for this one? Like, from what I've seen, the two that Lithuania really stood between were like a movie and so low, right? How were the odds for, for Stay? Because... It seems like we got another Gustav on our hands in this national final, I guess. Uh, but maybe she had better odds, I don't know. Um, it will probably finish bottom five in the final, even if it qualifies. Um, yeah, that might happen. That might happen. Winning because of the juries is kind of going to be the song's death in terms of qualification for it being an only televote semi. Could, could actually absolutely happen. Uh, Wikipedia has the exact number of votes, I think. Should we uh, go on Wikipedia then? Uh, no, why am I clicking on Georgia? You clumsy idiot. Um, where's the name of the... Where's the name of the... National final? There. Okay, wait. This is a terrible uh, system that I have going for me here right now. I just want to copy this name. And I'll put it in here and I'll put Wikipedia. Okay, I didn't have to do that. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, so we got all of the semis as well. Let's see. Oh, no, this is 2022. 
2023. Let's see. Televote votes. So 12,012. Okay, yeah, it's not a big margin. And then we had 9,300. So quite a quite a lot, like quite a lot, quite a quite a bunch fewer. I don't know how to say it. Rumor 3,700. I can't believe 3,780 people uh, voted for that. But kudos to you. You're. I'm happy you liked it. Uh, let's see what else we got. Austria, Austria is apparently like a 0 out of 10. The lyrics have been leaked and they are uh, not good. Wow. <laughs> that's so sh like that's such a shame. I like I want Austria to do well in Eurovision. I like them, but uh, they tend to not really send things up my alley, I guess. Uh, Joker out sweep in semi 2, please. Slovenia is actually a contender for top 3 in the semi, I think. I'm I would be very careful getting that optimistic. Um, so happy that Slovenia has a chance this year. Me too. What's your favorite Baltic representative representative this year? Well, Aya. <laughs> yeah, I mean Aya is my Aya might be my favorite of out of all of the songs so far. So uh, absolutely Latvia. Uh, for me, running order matters because Monica hadn't even won a semi, but as soon as she got last in the final, she wins. Maybe, maybe. But she did a revamp. People told me so. Maybe that has something with it as well. Uh, Slovenia is definitely going to qualify. Their charisma alone will carry them through, and they even have the song to back it up. I hope you're right. I really hope you're right. Edgar Allan Poe, Poe, Poe. All right. <laughs> Slovenia got first position out of all of the Eurovision songs so far in a poll of 511 people on Reddit. There is no way it isn't qualifying. See, people who are interested in Eurovision probably like it more than the general audience. I, I'm never getting my hopes up because I will just get disappointed. I really hope you're right, though, Sean. Uh, Lithuania is dropping in the odds. Uh, let's see. Monica winning was kind of obvious after her final performance. Gust Gustav wasn't, at least to me. I see. Um, uh, I'm so it's so sad that Romania loses interest in Eurovision. I really hope we will qualify this year because if we don't, I think Romania's future in EC will be even worse. Yeah, you, you, Romania have been screwed a few times now. On a Sunday and Amnesia are two of my favorites, so <laughs> it is what it is. But they made it with Yamama, which was amazing. Uh, and by the looks of that semi-final, they might actually make it this time around as well. That's 2022 silly, I noticed. <laughs> um, Edgar Allan Poe, if real feels like something, I'd go, wow, this is the worst thing ever, 12 points. Oh, so the, there's a song about Edgar Allan Poe. Interesting. Um, Romanians have such low interest in the contest that our winning song had 5,000 votes and our country has 19 million people. Yeah, th I mean, that's unfortunate, but... Um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. It's uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, people like Rumor. Good for you. Absolutely. Um, I just can't click with it, unfortunately. TGT is so amazing. Honestly, happy that at least one of my NF winners won. Yeah, happy to hear yeah, it was a Eurofan who edited the lyrics in Genius Page. Oh, okay, so it's actually fake. Uh, Reddit's top 40 in 2022 had France as the winner, so like, yeah, but France kind of messed up with the live performance, I'd say. Um, yeah, France was was definitely up there last year for me, too. Amazing song. Uh, Reddit was also super hyped about Fulen. Yeah, exactly. To be fair, they were right for that Fulen supremacy, but still, absolutely, Fulen supremacy. Every day of the week. Uh, the Reddit poll might show some general tendencies, but they also had Fulen top 5. Yeah, exactly. I think I saw a poll TV video where it had a short snippet of Austria's song, so I don't think the lyrics are fake. Oh. Finland has one nice song. No, Finland has seven nice songs. <laughs> uh, they have a very good national final. Um, of course, I have my favorites in it, but I mean, whatever they go for, they, it'll be something good, I'm sure. Uh, William of Wee Wee was on the jury that decided Austria's song and he described it as crazy. Interesting. Um, either way, Joker out are really cool people. I want the best for them. Yeah, me too. Uh, I predict Fulham getting top 10 before the final. Yeah. I would I would never... I don't know where I would predict them. Probably first, because I'm terrible at, at predicting. Um, so, let's see. Um... Of course, I just left Eurovision World's website. 
Are we done with Lithuania? I think we are. Uh, we don't need to dwell on that. Unfortunate that another one of my uh, non-favorites ended up going. But it is what it is. I gotta be complex like that. Uh, I got Latvia, at least. Um, so anxious about UMK next week. It'll be a nail biter for sure. Absolutely. I'm. I was gonna say I might watch it, but I'm. I'm not going to because I'm gonna watch Melfest. I have to see Loreen. Um, yeah. Uh, speaking of Reddit, I stumble across your channel because some people on the Eurovision subreddit talk about your channel, and people there really seem to like you. <laughs> yeah, I've. I've uh, I've seen this, like, there's an appreciation thread, which is actually absolutely incredible. Uh, I can't believe people actually go out of their way to, to make that. And there were, there weren't 200, like, upvotes, but there, there was something close to that, which is absolutely insane. So, I agree, Lawrence, it seems like people there like me, and that for that I am incredibly grateful. Um, I would love if Finland went from never qualifying to being a Eurovision powerhouse. I mean, never qualifying? Sure. I mean, they, they've had some good results in the past. They also had like a tendency to get null, null points in the, long ago. <laughs> um, well, well, there's like a song from Finland, from I think it's from the 80s or maybe early 90s, which is called like Reggae OK. It's one of, I, I shouldn't be mean, but it's one of the funniest things I've ever heard and seen in my life, I think. <laughs> um, Sorry if that's offensive or, or rude to say, but um, I think it's I think it's really funny. Um, let's see, if Cha 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 wins UMK, I'm about to have a three-way tie for my favorite song in the contest. No, you can't have ties, you have to pick a favorite. That's how it works. Uh, fi Finland not picking Cha 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 would be like finding a briefcase full of money and throwing it in the ocean. No, because there might be another briefcase right next to it with almost as much money that's called Ilivoimainen, and if, I mean, maybe you donate the cha 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 suitcase to charity and you take the Ilivoimainen suitcase for yourself, that's a that's a more accurate statement, I'd say. Um, let's see. Um, excited for San Marino. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not. <laughs> Uh, can't wait for UK and it's on my birthday. Happy early birthday, Feb. Uh, I hope you can celebrate with your favorite winning, unless your favorite is not the same as my favorite. Uh, I managed to predict DGT winning in Romania selection, which I'm happy about. Let's not talk about my other predictions, though. Yeah, I've stopped predicting. Um, still shocked about Blackbird not qualifying. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not really shocked. I wasn't really shocked about it. I wasn't massively cheering for it, even though I think it's pretty, but it, it never floored me, so... But uh, I know a lot of people really like it. Uh, I suspect Finland will not be choosing Cha 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 with the way the season has been going. Maybe not. <laughs> um, maybe we'll have uh, Robin Pakalen in, in Eurovision instead. Uh, I'm so happy I got tickets to watch the Melfis rehearsal in the arena on Friday night so I can fully focus on UMK on Saturday. Ah! Good going. Yeah, that's that's clever. Reggae OK is such a banger. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you do you, I do me. Um, 2015 to 2019 was indeed a pretty bad era for Finland results-wise. Uh, yeah. But it is kind of what you make of it as well. 2015 and 2016 were obviously not really um, that promising to do well. Uh, Reggae OK was in 1981. Oh, it's actually that old. Okay. I hate that song. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, take this with a grain of salt, but as far as I know, the legendary Eiffel 65 will be in the San Marinese NF. Wow. Okay, that could be interesting. I'm sure how their sound has improved over time. Like, it didn't go so well for Darude, but... Uh, Reggae OK is a fever dream. <laughs> Pretty much. Based Ilivoiman and supporter, of course. Love it. Uh, I had a three-way tie for my winner of UMK this year. Understandable. Um... Yeah, I probably like I I I never make a tie because I can't make a tie. That feels so. That feels like cheating. Uh, but uh, yeah, there are a lot of good songs in the selection. Take the portion boy suitcase. Yeah, you can do that as well. Uh, cha 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 may be a favorite to win Eurovision. I think it's too early to say. We need to see it live before we we come to assumption or make assumptions like that. Uh, I love five songs in UMK this year. One of the best NFs I've ever ranked. I agree. Um, one of the best national finals I've seen. Absolutely. 
I sense some incredible excitement about S <laughs> San Marino. <laughs> Aren't people saying Eiffel 65? Yeah. Uh, Blackbird is one of my favorite songs ever. It really helped me in dark times. I'm happy to hear it. Uh, I'm happy it could help you and give you some comfort, I assume, is what it did. Um, I definitely see how it could. Um, I guess it all ca kind of comes down to where you are in life as well. 2017 was... I didn't really need... Uh, I didn't have a dark time, so I didn't need a song to comfort me, I guess. I was I was on the happy song train in 2017. I loved Grab the Moment by uh, by Joust. Uh, and I thought uh, Occidentalis Karma was great. Um, I obviously also loved Beautiful Mess, which I guess isn't really the happy vibe train, but that's just such a good song that I have to like it. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess my, my music taste was happier in 2017. <laughs> Uh, I really think Moldova has a good chance at top 5 this year if they choose Pasha Parfeni. I wouldn't know. <laughs> not yet at least. I bet money on Sunstroke winning even though I also want Pasha. I'm not gonna bet money on anything winning. <laughs> uh, I have to spread Pasha Parfeni propaganda now. Please watch his MV everyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can we just let the grannies win Moldova? No, no more grannies. Thank, thank you. Um, I hope Sunstroke Project doesn't win. Kind of tired of their songs. Yeah, we don't we don't need them another time, I guess. And the fact that their song is called Yummy Mummy as well, it's just kind of off-putting, I guess. Uh, Joust's return this year was kind of a letdown after Grab the Moment. I listened to it, I agree. Uh, Grab the Moment was just something... I guess it was his peak. Uh, he dropped a few songs which I th found were pretty decent as well after it, but um, yeah, this one this one wasn't it. Uh, for me personally. Uh, if you like Joust, don't listen to his recent Norway attempts. Unfortunately, I did. Um, but uh, everyone can have a little bit, bit of a blip and everyone can come back stronger uh, going forward. Let's talk Melfest. Uh, we got a heat with some results here and uh, I need to talk with these people, the people who are 10 to 15 years old, aka the age of my students, or well, half of it is, um, why did we give Laurel 8 points so they came above Casanova's at the last voting? It would have been fine if you gave it 5 points, but Casanova's got lost because you decided to give it 1 and you gave 8 points to Laurel. And, uh, I mean, I just gotta say, Laurel's sober was... Like, in this in this heat, or deal tabling, I kind of felt like the songs were... Well, I can't say as high as possible, but... If you compare it to the other two heats, I feel like the songs were actually up here this time. And Laurel's song was still stuck down here. All of the others were up here. Kind of. Around this spectrum. And hers was down here. She has to come dead last. I don't accept anything else. I mean, I get that Casanova's wasn't everyone's type of music. It's completely fine. It, it's, it's not my perfect type of music, but it's very Swedish. It's very traditional. It's very charming and i think it was done correctly it had a nice performance to it very good staging it was charming inviting very just heartwarming and a catchy hook nice chord intervals in there it was just really nice um and i get it that the kids would never vote for it but it got one point from the people aged 30 to 44 i don't know i don't i don't like it <laughs> I wanted, um, I I was never like expecting it to go through or anything, and I'm not sure if I even would have wanted that, but it shouldn't finish below sober. I'm sorry, but uh, that's just me. I thought it was too like screechy, very nasal type of singing, and kind of just annoying in a sense. The song didn't really have a hook that stuck with me instrumentally. I felt it was quite flat, um, and I I just could not connect with the way that she was singing it. Um, I thought it was really obnoxious. So unfortunately. Um, I just didn't like that. Um, we'll move upwards, I guess. We had Idalova, which came fifth. I think this was... Like, this could have definitely been, like, a, a massive hit or a, or a little bit of a miss. This one just kind of ended up in the middle, kind of like Rayan in the first heat, I guess. However, this song was probably a bit, a bit stronger, I'd say. Um, I felt like the song didn't really have enough of that kind of drive to really make it connect. Um, it really wants to build like a certain atmosphere and a certain vibe around it. And it's really pretty. It's well written in that sense. Has a 
like a very pretty melody, especially in the chorus, and and like the ending segment of the chorus has a wonderful like tone in it, and there's like like this ambiance as well, along with how it's staged, it works really effectively. But as the song actually progressed, I felt like it's a bit on the underwhelming side. It never really like clicked as much as I wanted it to. Uh, I feel like that when the second verse joins in is where she completely drops me because it's trying to build a little bit. However, the issue here is like the melodic side of things, like the vocal here um, is incredibly uninspired. It's very like minimal in terms of, of its length. So the vocal melody is just like a half bar long and then there's just emptiness and you kind of feel like, like well, here we need something. There needs to be some kind of response or a continuation to the first half of this bar because otherwise you're going to lose me. I'm kind of being dropped from whatever you're trying to build here. Um, and I felt like that was incredibly poignant at the start of the second verse because the, the beat had kicked in, there was a little bit of energy brewing in there uh, and she starts singing and it, there was something like Jungle um, um, of Beton, which is like a, a, a jungle of, of, do you call it concrete? Um, I guess. And then just a long pause and nothing happens and you're just like... There needs to be something going on here. We've established, like, we've built towards something and there, the song wants to bu continue building. The instrumental does it. The vocal has to be on that same note and on that same vibe of just pushing forward. And the same thing goes for the second time around. Like, the second verse is this kind of flat approach that's very uh, empty. And I think that's the main issue with it. Uh, and then you kind of lost me and you got me back a little bit. It's very pretty, has a very mellow tone to it. It flows nicely throughout. Her singing has a nice tone to it. I don't think she's incredibly confident in her singing, but she has a very lovely voice at its core. But it's not this voice that really just, I guess, floors you with its conviction, kind of like Cornelia was last year, or like Clara Klingenstrom was back in 2021? Or was it 2022? No, 2021, I think. Um, yeah, 2021. Um, it didn't really have that conviction and I, I mean it had some authenticity but it didn't have enough to really win me over in that sense so I think it, it fell a little bit short on those sides and I don't mind the fact that it went out if it was in another heat I would have liked it for to go to the semi-final but I think this heat was a bit too strong for this one to actually make it through uh, so I'm satisfied with the results like the four that have actually gone through I'm satisfied with before I talk about those Let's catch up a little bit on the chat. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, we got some joust, joust talk there. Yep, wonderful. Waffle loved Casanovas. As a 15-year-old Laurel Slade. Yeah, <laughs> I can't imagine you thinking that. The kids supporting Laurel. Yeah. No extra credit for the 10 to 15s. No F on everyone. <laughs> Casanovas getting lost is a cram. I agree, I agree. The kids saved Laurel from the last place. Yeah, and they shouldn't have. <laughs> uh, I was kind of rooting for Ida Lova to make it, but not shocked she just missed out. But she didn't just miss out, she was 20 points out of... But she got 5th. I think that's 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 fair. Casanovas could get 6th, and I would, be, I would just be thrilled with the results, I'd say. Uh, excluding one thing, which we'll get to later. Um... I felt like Laurel's song was made for Margaret, but she hated it, so Laurel said, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe you're onto something. Who knows? Um, also, that performance made my eyes bleed, even though her voice is nicer than I thought it would have been. Uh, I didn't like her voice, unfortunately. Interesting performance with the, what is it, like rats or mice dancing around her? Looked a bit weird. Uh, Ida Lova so robbed, I agree. Or, well, do I agree? No, no, I disagree. Why did I say I agree? Sorry, Luca. <laughs> uh, I don't get why there's a semi-final for those in fourth and third place. Do they really have a chance in the final against the songs that play first and second in the heats? Yes, Lawrence, they do, because in 2013, our winner uh, came through that, that round. He finished third or fourth in the semi and won the whole thing in the final. So there is a, there is a point to it. Uh, and back in like when I started watching Oldie for Stolen, often like the songs from the second chance ended up getting like second or third in the final. So it's it's not out of the question. Uh, in 2018 as well, our second place uh, came from the second chance, just off the top of my head. Um, I wanted her to qualify over Paul Ray or Nodemont, to be honest. Yeah, I can see that. 
uh, I hope her flopping would stop her from constantly submitting her songs to every national final under the sun. I don't think it will stop her. Uh, sorry, I always forget about Ida Lova's song existing. Yeah, understandable. Um, Ida Lova's song was my favorite in this heat. Uh, yeah, nice. Uh, three mellow heats in a row, I've lost my favorite crying. <laughs> Unfortunate. It is what it is. Um, hey Groot, have you seen T-Mall Double Eleven Gala? I have no idea what that is, Joshua. But uh, feel free to tell me about it. Uh, I would swap Melanie for Casanova's. Yeah, I could, uh, I could... Mm, we'll get to Melanie very shortly. After your suggestion from yesterday, I love... I listened to Clara Klingenstrom's 2021 entry and I'm loving it. I'm happy to hear that, Francesco. It's really beautiful, uh, I think. Laurel not making it through is justice for all the bad songs she's written. I don't know what songs she has written, I haven't kept up. But, um, I'll take your word for it, I guess. Uh, why are there three to nine-year-old jurors? Only uh, Mr. God knows why. I think we will get a semi-qualifier still from this heat. I think we will get a semi-qualifier. You mean that one of them will go through to the final? Yeah, I think so too. I think maybe both. Um, we'll see. Uh, the three to nine-year-olds are the real experts. Exactly. Uh, would Air be one of your preferred Swedish entries of recent years? Maybe. <laughs> Uh, I never understand how the three to nine year old voting works. Um, no one does. Uh, maybe not like nine year olds, uh, understandable, but three year olds, I will never understand how a three year old can vote. Um, we should, uh, or do you get the voting license the day you turn three? I used to think Andre Hansen was the full name of a mellow winner. <laughs> you got it all wrong, but you've learned now, I guess. Uh, for the show, finished in fourth place, quite far off the top two and quite far ahead of, of fifth place, uh, which was Ida Lova. I thought this one clicked when I saw it live. Um, I'm thrilled for it to actually have been as good as it was. I felt like it was it had promise when I saw it. When I listened to it the first time, I felt like this could definitely just get sh f thrown to the shadows and just be forgotten very easily because the song didn't feel like it really had that punch in it. And I don't think the massive drive is there. Um, but for the type of instrumentation that this song has, I think it does everything that it wants to do quite well. Uh, and then when you saw the like snippet of the rehearsal, like when you saw the staging and everything, I felt like, this looks beautiful. This might actually be something that will click with me. And when I saw it tonight, it absolutely clicked with me. It was among my favorites. It, it just kind of felt like, here's a bunch of people who knew what they wanted to do and they pulled it off brilliantly. Um, I think maybe like a small issue that you could have with the song is her pronunciation is a bit on the mess side. You can't really hear everything that she's singing incredibly clearly. Uh, but still, it doesn't take away from the fact that I think this is a very well written song. It has a very nice impact on me as a listener. I love this kind of glossy soundstage that it has. Uh, works well with the staging as well with this gold and black uh, color grading. Uh, and I think her vocals are really strong. They have a wonderful tone in them. Um, it could kind of become a little bit like, I wouldn't say whiny or shouty at times, but if you're the type of audience, like, I wouldn't mind or I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't complain if you considered it to be a bit too much vocally, uh, maybe a bit like whiny in the, in the sound. I would understand that. Uh, for me, it works, uh, but it, it's on a fine balance there. Uh, but I think she has a lovely tone in her voice and that's really what, um, what clicks with me there. Uh, and I think the, the chorus has a great melody to it. Um, it has a nice flow, it's very easy listening, very easy going to just sit back and enjoy any time. Um, and I find it really enjoyable. I'm so happy for her that she went through, and I'm absolutely rooting for it in the semi-final to make it to the final. Uh, I will be listening to it. It went to the second chance or the semi-final, so I can listen to it already today. Maybe I'll put it on after, after the stream. Uh, <laughs> that might happen. And then we had Nubman, Släppa uh, Lasorier. I'm so disappointed that the live performance, like the staging was basically nothing. It was a bunch of birds behind them or crows, but on stage there was nothing. And that's like such an unfortunate par part of this. In 2008, 15 years ago, Nubman had a really impactful, palpable song about like kind of witchcraft from, from the old days. And they had a staging which was basically like a like a theat theater play. They went so all in with it. They were fantastic on stage, 
but they had basically there was a girl burning on stage which wasn't actually burning but basically the story of it is that there's a girl who's considered to be a witch and back in the old days if you were a witch you'd get killed so they actually put her on stage with flames surrounding her and it was like a theatrical performance it was such an amazing staging and I really wish they would have gone for so for like they didn't have to do that again but they needed something to happen on stage because this song has a great melody to it it's a song that you could really just um, what do you call it you could hum along to it at any point in the day I could wake up tomorrow and I will actually hum that song to myself and I will like Oh yeah, that, that song had a melody that just stuck to my head. And I like how it's also varied in, in the terms of its delivery. It's both vocally sung and it has the uh, the nickel harpa, which is the instrument that it's played on. Uh, it has that sound as well. So it's a, it's a really wonderful collective sound delivery there. Uh, and I like how it comes together at the end as well, where they layer the vocal with the nickel harpa as the melody co- goes all the way there. And I'm cheering for Nodeman to make the final as well from the semi-final. Uh, So both of these, I want them to go through. Uh, Royals went through straight to the final. Uh, I told you yesterday that I like Paul Ray. I think he has had two incredible songs in Melody Festivalen before. Talking in My Sleep is probably top three material from 2020. I'd, I'd probably say top three, maybe top four or five, but I would probably put it top three. Uh, and the missing piece was just beautiful had a wonderful staging with all of these orange walls and moving around very lovely color grading he's very charming on stage uh has a nice flow throughout the song it's a song you can listen to at any time and just man this is this is pleasant this is really nice has a great melody to it um but uh this one he went completely different energy intensity big alpha male vibe we gotta sing like we're basically like it's a song that you could kind of hear from like the Bastille or One Republic scrapbook and they were like nah these these lyrics are stupid and uh, they would just throw it away maybe not uh, I mean Imagine Dragons could probably release something with lyrical side of things here I never talk about lyrics why am I talking about lyrics when it comes to this song I don't know it's just because I they irk me I guess <laughs> it's just what I get um, yeah I've already talked about them so much I hate the lyrics of this but the performance was great so much energy I uh, like the backgrounds a lot. Uh, I think the, the fireworks had a great I- impact on it. The choreography is insane. I think it's it's a song meant to be performed and it's it definitely deserves its place in the final because it's it's a show and it's a like a performance that you will remember. But as a song, it does not deserve to be there. But I'm happy Royals went to the final because that's not a song that I would have wanted to listen to <laughs> during the next week. Unless I go to the gym, of course, and I have to, you know talk with my bros and act royal together you know whatever um but no i I wouldn't listen to this during the next week uh either way so um happy for him to be in the final uh for the first time he went directly to the final as well which is nice for him but um the song i could do without it uh especially like it got really repetitive towards the end i'm sorry but at the end i felt like yeah this you're, you're repeating this chorus way too much, and it already irks me, this chorus, so, no. Uh, but a song that I definitely would have wanted to listen to every single hour of the next week is called Air by Marcus and Martinez. I never thought that I would actually be cheering for two Norwegian girl idol boys um, with with more fangirls than I have subscribers. Well, everyone has. <laughs> But basically, if, if I take all of my subscribers now, 4,000 of you, and multi- multiply that with another 4,000, 4, then maybe we'll have Marcus and Martinez's group of fangirls. And I thought, like, I'm never going to be able to support this and, and cheer for this. But when you have a song that good, and when you have a performance that good, how can I not? This, uh, by the songs we have right now, this is the winner. It has to be. <laughs> like, it's so much... Like, there's professionalism through the roof. The song has a like very I what do you call it characteristic sound to it. It's inspired by like early two thousands or maybe even late nineties trance music in a way, but the production is polished to a absolute insane extent. It sounds absolutely incredible. It's very dynamic in in the in the sound design as well. It has a wonderful use of synth throughout. The song builds suspense in a very effective manner, almost like Euphoria esque in the opening. 
um, I think. And then this like drop section just has this really bright, plucky synth sound that's actually like kind of mesmeric in its delivery in in my head. Um, and um, I just love the melody of it as well. I think everything feels sounds incredibly polished and sounds incredibly uh, well executed. And then you combine that with what is absolutely by miles the best live performance of all of the songs so far. The light shows out of the world, these lasers, they look incredible. Uh, there's a choreography to it as well. They're incredible on stage. They have so much charisma and such a like wonderful um, aura around them, I guess, when they perform. Um, and when you also have these insane lights and strobes going everywhere, and there was this part where they had like spots going through the roof and or wait it wasn't spots it was just like like lasers but there was this twirling kind of thing going on above them it's just like these effective shots and it's it's something that's just kind of transcends you into a different type of world of performances it's up there with the best performances that i've seen in melody festival and in eurovision so it's a performance destined for eurovision it's a song destined for eurovision but we haven't heard loreen yet and if I choose one song that I will probably listen to the most so far, it's probably Panetos from the Second Heat. But Air is probably the best song that I've heard so far. Well, it is it is the best song. It, it's it's mind-blowingly good. But uh, and those are my opinions. What do you think of the results from Melfest? Tell me. Uh, and I'll be reading some comments. Um, you've been ri writing a lot. <laughs> uh... Let's see, three-year-olds paying the telephone bills and having their own phones. Yeah, they they don't. Their parents basically paid for all of those uh, all of those votes for Laurel. Melanie was my favorite with Ida Luba. I mean, Marcus and Martinez are great, but their song is just not for me. Absolutely understandable. Great performance, though. I agree. I'm really curious to hear Laureen's song. Euphoria is my favorite ESC song, and I honestly I doubt she can do better than Euphoria. But who knows? Yeah, Euphoria is just the all-time like classic. You. you Whatever she makes, it's not going to be Euphoria, but it could be something that you enjoy to a similar extent. But it's not going to be Euphoria. It can't be Euphoria. Only Euphoria is Euphoria. There's a lot of Euphoria in that sentence. Um, for the show's staging was very inspired by Hold Me Closer, or at least it seemed like that for me. The big prop and her interacting with it looked nice, and I'm happy she went to the semi. Yeah, there might be something to that. I mean, it's a similar type of song as well, but it was completely devoid of like the guitars and everything. Um... Unless I'm mistaken. I've only heard it once, so I can't know for sure, but it didn't have like that kind of soft rock uh, input in it. Uh, it was more ar around synths and pads, I feel. Uh, I feel like everyone's forgetting that Mariette is in Heat 4 too. Hopefully she can win this time because her last four efforts were all incredible. I know people forget about it, but I mean, judging from her last two songs, I don't think it's undeserved to forget about her being in... in well, that sounds incredibly harsh, but her last two efforts have not been for me. I think they've been weaker, uh, so I'm, I'm not as excited as I used to be for her to return. Uh, watching the audience reactions, it was quite obvious to me the twins were going to win this. Yeah, of course. Um, even before I had heard the songs, I knew that they were going to go through. Um, I say and sound really cocky, but I mean, that's that's just what you feel. Uh, I've heard something about Mariette's entry this year, and I'm not that exciting. Uh, okay, I haven't heard anything about it. Yeah, they say that Mariette's song is her worst attempt. Stop saying this. <laughs> I don't want to get discouraged. Uh, Groot, are you bird-phobic? No. <laughs> but, I mean... It was basically just birds on an LED screen. Yeah. I mean, th th they have the potential to have a better performance than that. Uh, Nordman didn't click with me. I actually would have preferred Casanova's to get through instead of them. Absolutely understandable. Not everything can be for everyone. Happy to see some love for Casanova's, though. I think they're incredibly charming. Uh, World Sasuri says, Really don't think that Marcus and Martinez will win just because they are Norwegians, and do not think that in final, where the competition is closer and best songs are, so many would vote for them. We'll find out. Uh, but I don't think the fact that they're Norwegian will stop them. Uh, they're still very famous in Sweden, so it's it's not an issue, I think. Honestly, I'll never understand how Teos didn't go to direct to the final. Mm, I expected him to, but I was so happy that he didn't, because Panetos went instead, and I absolutely loved their song so, and their performance. They, they knocked it out of the park, so I'm ecstatic that Teos didn't go to the final. 
Uh, second time I've heard of Swedish witchcraft this week. Really? Tell me what the, the other one, the other time is. Uh, I think them winning depends on this last heat. I agree. You, you just joined the stream. No idea if someone already told you this, but Monica's stay did get slightly changed between the semi performance and the final. They did tell me that. Uh, I feel like the transition from verse to course is a bit smoother. That's good because that was one of my complaints about it. So, and of course, has different lyrics. Interesting. Royals was yeah, I cringed. <laughs> yeah, when I first heard the "treat you royally" lyric, it was a similar feeling of eating an unexpected pepper in your soup. Had a similar face too. <laughs> Uh, that's wonderful. Well said. Uh, also, is there a reason why the back dancers are always the same people? They are great, but I think I know them more than the actual artist. Yeah, Melody Festival has the same group of backing dancers for all of the songs, unless you bring your own, which you can do if you want to. Uh, but I mean, Melody Festival basically just has these on the payroll, or SVT, I guess, have, have them on the payroll. So they're just... You can have these dancers if you want to. I guess that's how it works, kind of. Uh, it's always the same ones, yeah. And back in the day, it was always, you know, the same kind of choir for all of the songs. Uh, so usually you felt like, oh, I've seen the, the backing vocalists more times than the others. And sometimes, like, also happened that the backing vocalists competed themselves. Uh, there's, an, there's an artist in Sweden called Velvet, who used to be, like, the backing vocalist. And then one, one year, she was just, oh, she's the main singer now. So no more backing vocal duty for her. Um, and she had, a, she had a little bit of success, I think. Uh, she, I'm not sure if she ever went to the final though. I don't think she did, but she was in the Andra Hansen sometime. Uh, of course, but I somehow feel and predict either way how Heat foregoes Maria Sur to be ahead of Marcus Martinez because it is a pleasant song and Maria is Ukraine, Ukrainian refugee. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know how big the impact of Maria will be, uh, but I think Air would be a much more fun song to send uh, and performance at that. The performance that Maria Sur had was not really my thing either. It was a bit Nordman-esque. Didn't really have a lot going on on stage, I think. Royals has a performance that I will remember, which is something I wish I didn't consider in this song. Accurate. <laughs> uh, I hate song titles that refer to existing songs. No song would otherwise be called Royals. Ah, interesting. Mm, yeah, maybe. Maybe you're onto something. But a lot of songs are called Air, I feel. <laughs> Um, yes, the only ones who can beat them is Loreen and Maria Sur. And maybe, I mean, we, we haven't heard the songs from Heat 4. Maybe there's something Cornelia-esque in there. Uh, we don't know. The Twins did that. It's one of the better ones so far. Absolutely. As a Norwegian, I cheered for them even though they are in Melfast. I think this was a good move for their career and good on SVT for getting them before Norway and Germany. I mean, I don't understand why they're not participating in Norway. They could have won that as well. Uh, especially with this song. Is it weird to you as a Swede that Marcus and Martinez are participating at Mellow as Norwegians? <sighs> a little bit maybe, but not entirely. I think the weird part is that like they have no connection to Sweden really. But Margaret didn't either, and she was in Melfest a few times, so no, I think I think we get used to it, I guess. But it's always a bit like off-putting, like you don't speak the lang like of course Norwegian and Swedish is very similar, but you don't know anything about the language. Um, you don't really know our culture, and it's it's just kind of feels like, I mean, I get why you want to participate, but your own country has a similar version, don't they? So, yeah, whatever. I should I shouldn't complain about that, but I feel like yeah, there there might be like some critique from some people, um, and I would understand why there is. I mean, this is a Swedish competition for Swedish people to be ha find a representative for Sweden. In an international competition, um, you wouldn't have, you know, if, if Sweden's football team played a game, we can't just go and have Lionel Messi play for Sweden all of a sudden. It doesn't work like that. Um, but I'll stop jabbing about that. <laughs> uh, I love Marcus and Martinez's performance. If Loreen doesn't have an amazing song, it's a clear favorite for me. I agree. I agree. My favorite so far. Uh, hey, Groot. Hey, everybody. Hope you're, that you're having a lovely time of the day. Thank you, you too. Here is your night. Nightmare, not nightmare. Here's your nightmare. <laughs> okay. I uh, hope you're having a good one too. Danielle says hello, Groot. Hello, people. Hello, Danielle. Uh, my thing with Melody for Solon this year is that the songs are not up to par with the stage and the staging potential. I think Air is for sure, and I think For the Show had a good performance as well. Um, good morning from here, says Kale Project Groot. Just catching up with the results now. How are they for you? Melfest, 
thumbs up. Lithuania, thumbs down. <laughs> Iceland, don't know. Uh, nice to see you. This is probably the first Marcus and Martinez song I've heard that I actually liked. I haven't really listened to their other songs, so I can't I can't say anything. Didn't didn't realize you were streaming today too. Seems like you've taken a liking to it. No, I love it. It's so much fun. <laughs> but my voice is gonna kill me uh, sooner or later. Uh, predictable results, but somehow my mind just keeps thinking of Laurel sober. I think I'm going crazy. <laughs> Uh, Baltic states are all very good this year. I guess, but... Ah, uh, there were better options, in my opinion. Uh, late, but to be honest, I wouldn't expect Loreen to even try to match Euphoria. Please don't necessarily have to top their previous efforts. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. Statement was the perfect song to return with for me, for Loreen. It's just, like, so shocking to me that people actually didn't care for it enough. I, I loved it. Uh, like, Statements is one of my favorite songs in Melody Festival, and period. Like, it just is. Uh, but people didn't like it, and that's fine. Um, granted, I think Alexander's 2018 entry is a bit cringe, but you get my point. Yeah, I get your point. Absolutely. The way my favorites finished fifth every heat until now has me worried for Loreen. <laughs> I, I highly doubt Loreen will finish fifth in a heat. But what else have finished fifth? Was Rayan fifth, fifth in the first heat? And then in the second, who was fifth in the second? Uh, where can I find the heat? All of them. Ugh, I can't find anything on this website. Terribly sorry. You'll have to deal with me scrolling through everything. Here we go. Oh, Victoria. Ah, huh, interesting choice. Uh... Had a nice chat tonight. Good night and good stream to everyone. Hope the next stream we will be discussing how happy we are that Carrier won. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Norway asked them a few months later. Their song from Elfest was already ready, they said. And later even Germany asked them to compete. So it was just the timing. NRK was too late. Then I got it. Thank you for... I didn't know you, you could actually find all of that. Uh, but then I know. Thank you for sharing. Uh, gonna have to go out for dinner, but you all have a nice one. Have a wonderful dinner. Uh, eat something yummy, like yummy mummy. <laughs> uh, Baltic states were better last year, in my opinion. Last year, way. Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. Yeah, Sentimentai was good, really good. Uh, home was really good for Estonia. What was Latvia last year? Oh, yeah, instead of meat. Uh, yeah, that was great too. I like, like my favorite song from the Baltics this year, I like more than all of the Baltic songs from last year, but overall, Maybe I agree, do you? I think it's... Mm, I'm not sure. If it wasn't for having to choose an ESC entry, I would have. I would love for the Scandinavian NFs to merge together. It would be such an amazing final each year. I mean, Norway already had an amazing final this year. They don't need anything from Sweden and, and the others. Uh, I would just get kind of sad that so many great songs would miss out on that potential final. So... Uh... <laughs> Uh, I once got recommended a song from Marcus Martinez, and I'm all the way in Uruguay, so I guess they have a big impact overall. Absolutely. Um, I mean, they're they're famous. I just never really checked their songs, so that's that's why. Uh, Statements is better than Euphoria, in my opinion. Don't kill me. I will kill you. <laughs> um, they're two completely different types of songs. Uh, completely different, and it all depends on mood, I'd say. Um, Euphoria is just that perfect pop song for me. Statements is like a, all about the experience, which is just insane. Uh, I wonder who would win the Norwegian semi televote if Marcus and Martinez ended up participating for Sweden. <laughs> Probably Sweden. Bridges is better than Home, at least for me. Mm, I think Home was amazing performed live as well. Mm, I'm not sure. I feel of Laurel sober as a disaster bop, which everyone should hate, but somehow I kind of enjoy it. I feel like a weird person. If you enjoy it, you enjoy it. Don't ever feel weird about that. Uh, we enjoy what we want. We don't always have explanations to enjoy what we enjoy, but uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, I have a lot of odd songs that I enjoy as well, so so yeah. <laughs> Groot, gotta say this. Thanks for all the effort in checking the national finals, recording the videos, and analyzing so many songs. We appreciated one of the most in-depth reactions. Thank you. Uh, it's been it's been a lot to to do this year, but uh, I've enjoyed it at the same time. Um, but like last week, when, when there were seven finals on the same week, I felt like I was 
just moving towards a brick wall with my head going first into it. Uh, that, that was a lot. Um, but thank you. Uh, Marcus and Martinez mentioned they saw Melfast live last year and a producer approached them in person. Ah, interesting. Uh, interesting. Do you think that Estonia and Latvia chose the right ones because as understood you are not a huge fan of Lithuania? Latvia, absolutely. Uh, Estonia, I had other favorites, but Bridges was among among the best ones there, I'd say. Uh, hello, really like your channel. Thank you for the reactions. It's interesting to listen to your opinion. Thank you for saying that. Very kind. Uh, I'm happy you like you like the channel, uh, and I hope that I that you will continue liking it uh, for for a long time forward as well. Uh, thank you for stick for saying that. I appreciate it. Uh, of the songs selected so far, how many do you feel like are upgrades, downgrades compared to 2022? That's incredibly difficult to say because I don't have everything in my head. Um, Latvia is an upgrade, even though I found. Uh, last year to be charming. Um, Slovenia is difficult to say. I think I actually prefer Carpe Diem over Disco, even though I love Disco. Um, what other ones do we have? Norway is an improvement because I never cared for Give That Wolf a Banana. Even though it was funny, uh, I think this year they actually have a pretty, pretty banger of a song. And um, yeah, Belgium is not an improvement. Uh, and I, I can't sit here and think of all of them. Groot, what's your biggest ESC guilty pleasure? <sighs> Eurovision guilty pleasure. Mm. Would you consider Love City Groove a guilty pleasure from 1995? I don't think it's a guilty pleasure because it's just so iconic for its time. But I think a lot of people could just be like, what is this? Why is this a thing? And why did it finish 10th? Um, if you think that, then that's a guilty pleasure for me, I guess, because I think it's absolutely amazing. It's it's so fun, uh, and so like time iconic. It has a great hook to it, wonderful uh, charisma on stage as well. I love them, and it, it's just perfect. That that would be uh, one if you consider it to be a guilty pleasure. Uh, Chris says yes, I've made it in time. Hello, Groot. Nice to see you again. Well, I mean, I started one hour and twenty minutes ago, but welcome. You're v very welcome to be here. I'm happy to have you back. Uh, we're not going to be going on for much longer, but I'm I'm happy to have you here regardless. Uh, Katrina says, personally, I hate our song, mostly because I think Alessandra is not that great live vocally. Um, that's fine. Um, I mean, it wasn't my favorite in Norway, but it has a very nice melody to it. And and I think it's a, like ambitious performance as well. And um, I mean, I didn't like last year's effort. Like, Norway will probably not be towards my top five this year. Uh, or anything like that, but um, I think it's it's still something that I enjoy listening to more than last year's effort. It was just one that I had at the top of my head. Uh, my twenty twenty three guilty pleasure is Malta. That's not a guilty pleasure. It's it's fun. It's really fun. Um, uh, let's see. I don't know what Love City Groove is. Lol rip. It's the UK entry from nineteen ninety five. You should. Uh... <laughs> Take a look, make up your mind. Is this the best thing I've ever seen in my life or is it absolutely ridiculous and awful? Up to you. Uh, Love City Groove is very much a song of its time and I think that's great. Agreed, absolutely, exactly. That, that's exactly what it is. It's a song from 1995. You would never hear it in 1985 or 2005. You could hear it from like 90, 92, between 92 and 98, that song could have been released and no, no other time. 95 is just spot on there. Uh, is there anyone from past years of Melody for Solon that you wish had been participating this year? <sighs> this year? It all depends on the song. I, I I got a question similar to this yesterday where there was like artists that I would love to see in Melody for Solon. Vargas and Lego. Oh wait, no, from past years. No, I didn't get this question yesterday. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I got a question from like artists that have never been in. Uh, but artists who have been in before that I would like to see return. Um, do I have any? Like I feel like a lot of the artists that I want, like that I see, that I want to return are artists that have already been in too many times. Um, I'm trying to think of one who has only like been in once or twice. Um, <sighs> Dead by April. Dead by April. Uh, I would really like to see them come back. That would be really cool to see what they could make up now in 2023 or 2024 or whatever. That would be my choice. Uh, 
I think it's a guilty pleasure, yeah. <laughs> Got it, Luca. Love City Groove is one of the best, best charting UK Eurovision songs, isn't it? How can that be a guilty pleasure? Is it really? That makes me so happy to hear. I don't think it's on Spotify, though, which makes me so sad every time. Um, I wouldn't consider it a guilty pleasure. Personally, I really like it. Happy. Happy to hear that. Um, ah, yeah, I haven't looked into the 90s. No, but get on it. The 90s is like the peak of Eurovision, in, in my opinion. <laughs> 90, let's see. Like, the whole period between 93 and 98 is just heaven for me. Um, 94 could be considered a little bit of a, like a step down from the rest, but it's all great. Uh, Denmark 1997 would be mine. I agree. Denmark 1997 is also really fun and charming. It's kind of in the same vein as Love City Groove, I'd say. I agree. That one is amazing, too. Uh, oh, I understand it for sure. Give a Wolf a Banana was all you either like or you really don't. I was one of the ones who loved it, yeah. Um, I didn't, I didn't, like, hate it or anything. Uh, I thought it was okay and a bit funny, but I, I never got the hype for it, basically. Uh, between Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia, which of the countries generally do you prefer? Judging generally on all entries they've sent in their history. <laughs> you think I have them in my head? Um, Estonia's been good a lot of the times. Like, if I... <clears throat> Sorry, wow, losing my voice already. If I don't pay, like, if I don't think about it too much, I'd spontaneously say Estonia, but I might be lying to myself. But probably Estonia, yeah. Um, and if we're talking actual songs, almost no one cares about the Netherlands 2001. That one's pretty. Uh, hasn't really stuck with me, but it's a pretty song. Um, I like the calm mood of it. Um. Let's see, Danish people should hide in the ground because Riley's vocals are really bad live. There was a lot of processing on them, weren't there? I mean, you you should have gone for Niklas. I'm sorry, but you just should have. Um, if you could save one NF song from this year and send it as San Marini's entry this year, which one would you choose? Ugh. It's difficult because it might necessarily not be my favorite national final song. But I'm actually gonna go for Freedom from Denmark because I want that rock song to be a part of the selection. If we're gonna get a similar song from another country later on, then fine, then I don't need this one as well. But I just love the variation that that could have bring, or variety that that could have brought um, to all of the songs. Um, that would have been absolutely wonderful. But if we're gonna if we're gonna get like a vintage rock song with actually a heavy drive to it, not Bulgaria from last year, something with a heavy drive like Freedom has then I would love to for that. If not Freedom, probably Splash. Splash would be absolutely amazing to have. Uh, or Cenere. <sighs> Difficult. But Splash probably, because that one would stand out a lot. It has such a charm um, to it. Uh, let's see what else we have. Austria 2005 is the most guilty pleasure of all time after Ukraine 2007, but everyone secretly loves that. Austria 2005 is a nice choice. Nice shout there, Astrom. Yeah. That one is charming. I kind of enjoy it too. But it can just be considered really absurd as well. What would you say if Be Happy by Ping Pong or whatever they're called is my is my guilty pleasure? Oh, I love Be Happy from Israel 2000. I don't really, but you get the con you get the concept. Uh, mine is Lithuania 2013. Andrius Pujavis is a king. Lithuania 2013. Oh, something, the the shoe song. <laughs> Interesting choice. Um, uh, I was in the arena and heard Alessandro with autotune and I will, without autotune and I will tell you it's not promising. Oh, that's that's a shame. My big worry is Alessandro missing the whistle note. Yeah, maybe not have a whistle note if you're, if you're unsure about actually nailing it. Uh, Italy avoided that in Junior Eurovision by axing it all together in the live performance. I haven't watched Junior Eurovision, sorry, so I wouldn't know. Uh, my guilty pleasure would be Genghis Khan, if it is a guilty pleasure. It's not. Genghis Khan, everyone likes Genghis Khan, don't they? Uh, Give That Wolf a Banana was the worst Norwegian entry, in my opinion. No, uh, there are a few, like, there was this song called, like, Dure Mi Fasula Tido, or something. I think it was just called Dure Mi. That one was pretty bad. There was San Francisco in 97, which wasn't very good. Um... What else do we have from Norway? 
there have been a few blips in, in the discography there. Uh, I would not say Give the Wolf a Banana is the worst one. Um, take care of your voice, thank you, I'll, I'll try my best. Uh, in terms of overall entries, I'd say Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. Well, like in order. <laughs> um, I don't know why, but what do you think of but France 91, uh, which lost the tiebreaker with Corolla? I'm not going to pronounce the French title there. You know me too well. <laughs> I will never enjoy that or uh, pronounce that. It's a good song. It's really has its own world building, very atmospheric, very tangible in that sense. I, I really like it. But I have another winner in 1991, and I will not reveal which that one is. Because maybe, 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 maybe one day I will actually make uh, continue my top lists back in time. But uh, that's a maybe. And if, if I ever do that, then I want my 91 winner to be a secret until then. Uh, if you could choose a new set of big five countries to qualify every year, which countries would you choose? San Marino, Andorra, Monaco, Morocco, Bosnia-Herzegovina. There you go. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I think it's fine the way that it is. Um, maybe a system where if you get top five the previous year, you get top, you get an automatic spot in the final. That would be... So it's not a set five countries. Like, if you do well the year before, here, have a little reward. That would be cool. Like they had before when the top 10 countries automatically got a spot. It results in some worse songs being in the final, but maybe five is like a reasonable amount because we still kind of get bad songs from time to time from like UK and Spain and Germany. Um, so, yeah. Latvia was legit, legit one of the best countries in the early mid 2000s. They had a few good ones in there. <laughs> they also had too much, didn't they? The, too much, too much, too much, too much. So maybe not. <laughs> but yeah, I, I get your point. Um, let's see. Fellow freedom enjoyer. Nice to hear. Groot, I always wondered whether Swedes were harsh or not to Anna Bergendahl for not making it to the finals back in 2020. Only asking because I think it was a first timer for Sweden. Yes, um, there's a there's a harsh attitude towards... There was, absolutely, when, when it happened. And it kind of got enhanced as years went by, um, because we made the final every time uh, after as well. Uh, and it was like it just became this thing. I mean, people don't take it too seriously, but I, I, I would definitely understand if she received some kind of, I guess maybe not abuse, but some kind of like, what do you call it, uncomfortable feelings. Like if she, if she felt like that at times, I, I absolutely understand it and. Uh, you could see how kind of broken she was when she, when she, or well, broken was not the correct way to say it, but when she came back in 2019 with Ashes to Ashes, you could just really feel on her that this was a really big deal for her, and she got treated like these constant like reminders, I guess, that she's the only one to to miss out. Uh, I really feel for her, I do, and I felt like it would have been so perfect for her to win in 2020 when she, by the way, had the best song, the best performance just the perfect package in Kingdom Come and she came third and then the contest didn't even happen anyway but I felt like that would have been the perfect opportunity 10 years after she got eliminated she gets a revenge with probably one of the best songs in that would have been in Eurovision 2020 in that case it would have just been such a beautiful way to to go for her but um didn't it didn't end up that way uh, be happy is so interesting in terms of the politics behind it oh I don't know anything about that Sorry, Jorgi. Um, <laughs> I don't know anything about it. At first, I just expected you to write Be Happy so interesting in terms of its musical quality or something like that, and I expected a, sar a sarcastic comment. Uh, I don't know anything about the politics behind it. Uh, a lot of people love that song lately, so yeah. Be happy. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. Just stop by to give this live stream a like. Much appreciated. I'm happy to hear that. Loving Israel 2000 is not that far from liking Croatia 2023, and the second one's getting quite popular. <laughs> I mean, vocally, Israel 2000 was just the train wreck. I don't really feel guilty about any song I enjoy, honestly. No, me neither. Never. Um, but I probably wouldn't go around and saying, oh, you have to listen to this song, and it's a song in terms of, like, similar to Be Happy. But I would never like shy away from the fact that, yeah, I think this is a good song. And if someone asked me, like, do you really think this is good? I would say, 
yeah I think so you don't have to think so but I think so I think you have to have that mentality because otherwise you just feel so pressed into liking what other people like and you can fall for peer pressure and whatnot just be you you like what you like and that's fine everyone likes what they like and everyone will like something absurd in some type of area regardless um i won't be staying for long however i want to sleep go sleep bye bye uh, <laughs> uh gute nacht <laughs> listening to splash made me want to book a trip to rural sicily and just walk and just walk along countryside roads while listening to it on repeat that sounds like a wonderful plan you should do it uh, Norway has a lot of bad songs. Yellow Wolf of Banana is what, not one of them in my opinion, but I'm biased since I'm Norwegian. <laughs> Norway has a lot of bad songs, yeah. Uh, a few of them. I would say the worst Norwegian entries are 2007 and 2018. Mm, nah, I disagree. Um, but you hadn't stuck around in the 90s and maybe not in the 80s and 70s either. So you, you could scroll back in the catalog and you can find some, uh, some of the worst ones. Um, so now on the 19th we have France's entry, yeah, good. Wait, that's today, because it's past midnight now, so today we're gonna get France's song. Nice for telling me. On the 25th, 25th Portugal semi-1, Iceland semi-2, Melfast heat 4, we have Finland picking their song and San Marino 2. On the 26th, Poland picking their song. A lot going on. <laughs> but a lot of them are just semis and heats, so yeah. Genghis Khan, Pleasure of Pleasures. How do you feel about the songs from the black and white era? A lot of them are amazing, uh, but then <laughs> some of them are just like, you, you forget about them the second that they're over. But there are hidden gems back in the in the black and white era. And I do love me some classical type of music. Uh, the Small Five, exactly. Uh, I like both Doremi and San Francisco. You do you, Nils. Kudos. Enjoy. Uh, what's your least liked song Sweden ever sent to Eurovision? Um, well, that's hard. Um, like, the one that I was most upset with the fact that we sent it was If I Were Sorry in 2016. But it's not the worst song we've sent. But I was really, like, just, what do you call it? Uppjeven. Um, like, dejected when I, f when I just saw, like, yeah, we actually went went with that one and we had human right next to it finishing second i was just like whatever uh, i don't care it's but yeah I, w I was very underwhelmed and kind of just yeah dejected when that happened uh, but it's not the worst song we sent but I i'd say that one uh, igran Cal montenegro 2013 was my guilty pleasure of that year thank think it was rob from a final position i mean it definitely stands out uh, absolutely Jan Teigen was a big legend in Norway. Of course, I mean, he is, but he's kind of also infamous for having null plus, right? He's got a few of those, doesn't he? Uh, Igranka is not a guilty pleasure. It is just straight up an amazing entry. See? Astron thinks so too, uh, Chris. Your favorite 1991 song is Brazil, probably. You look like someone who loves that, but not really. <laughs> I'm not answering that. Uh, okay, but Too Much is also one of the funniest songs of all time. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Uh, do you have any favorite ESC songs in unorthodox time signatures? Do I? Uh, not that I can just name like this. I mean, <laughs> I was about to say Probka, but I don't really like Probka. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I guess you'll you'll have to put I up there now. I haven't I haven't thought about it. Uh, I'll have to get back to you on that when I've thought about it a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I loved Kingdom Come. I was wanting her to get her time again. I agree. Absolutely. Would have loved for King Kingdom Come to have won. Uh, I won't allow anyone to come for my girl Anna. She has so many quality entries in Melfest and in my opinion didn't serve to NQ in 2010. She should have won in 2020. Yes. I agree with both statements. I don't think that it deserved to be like high in the final in 2010, but I think it deserved to qualify. But I'm Swedish, so you can call me bias if you want to. It's fine. Uh, it is just so weird how Lebanon was set to compete in 2005 and then it just disappeared forever. <laughs> I did not know that. Interesting. Um, to be honest, I think Anna winning in 2020 and then not even being allowed to compete that year or the next year would be even worse. I agree. That would... Or maybe not. Because like just the concept that actually the Swedish people got behind her and actually wanted her to go for this. 
I think I think that would still be worth a lot. Like she would have still won Melody Festival and again. And that kind of just shows that yeah, we're not we're not like mad at you or whatever. We we really like you and we want to we want you to be the representative for Eurovision. And then it not happening, I mean it's a shame. But I think there's still like something in it that uh, that really makes that special. Uh, I agree. Watching and listening to Mellow 2020, what well, now I actually think Kingdom Come was better than the fan favorite Bulletproof, even though I love both. I think both are great, but Kingdom Come was just right up my alley. It had the performance to really knock it out of the park, and I think it's a song you can listen to as many times as possible and just love it every time. I think it's perfect. Um, uh, they didn't compete because their broadcaster didn't allow them to air Israeli content, and Israel was in the contest. Interesting. Well, as long as Israel are around, then I guess we won't have Lebanon. And <laughs> But yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to get into that political situation. Uh, it's intriguing, though. What do you think about the change of the voting system in the semifinals this year? Uh, interesting. We'll see how it goes for it. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Um... Yes, he was known for the zero points. Uh, Yon, what was his name? Was it Yon Taige? Yon Taigen? Uh, and we thought it was great. <laughs> Funny. Uh, I love Propka. I wouldn't consider that a guilty pleasure because it does sound like something I would enjoy, to be honest. Interesting taste. I, I, I don't really click with it, but it's intriguing. I'll give you that much. And it's, like, intense as well. So I, th there's charm to it, but, but I don't love it. Uh, you do you, Nils. Uh, I was at the semi in 2010 with some Swedish friends rooting for Anna. We were also at the hotel in Oslo when she left to go home to Sweden. She seemed very distraught. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, imagine the pressure you have on you. And especially for, for like Sweden who always qualifies. It's it's harsh. Um, but yeah. Serbian Montenegro 2005 had an odd time signature. Probably the best result of a, un of a song using those. Serbian Montenegro 2005 is one of the best songs that I've heard in, mod in, in Eurovision. Dot. Period. <laughs> Nothing more to say. Uh, that one's up there. Totally agree with you. 2010 was one of my loved ones for me. I'm just happy I triggered a conversation about Anna. <laughs> really liked her in this in This Is My Life. Yeah, we can always talk about Anna Bergendahl. I think Kingdom Come, as I said, is one of the best Melfest songs. So, um, Let's see... Um, Anna is a nurse these days and kicking goals, so I'm happy for her. Absolutely. She's very admirable. Um, love it. Uh, Lebanon picked a song and all for 2005. Quantu Fui by Aline Lahoud. It's a really nice song. Maybe I should listen to that. It's interesting. Do you remember when you first listened to Euphoria? Everyone remembers when they first listened to Euphoria. At least in Sweden. Uh, but we weren't sure like that was gonna be the one because we also had Danny with Amazing and he was like tipped to like this will be the winner. We everyone was just certain that that was gonna be the case. But the more you thought about it, you were just like, Loreen might actually have this. And like Amazing by Danny was also amazing, <laughs> but when Euphoria just like it just had that impact on you and you just felt like we can't not send this. Um, it's kind of the same feeling that I got with Hold Me Closer last year, like. We can't give like we can't give away this opportunity to send this, uh, but I feel for Danny in that year. Um, he really went all out and had something worthy of sending. But <sighs> shucks. <laughs> um, there's even a harsh video with an all caps title by R NRK showing Anna's face when she realized she didn't qualify. Mm, yeah, I mean that happens when it's in Eurovision. I mean. People get sad. We still have the, what do you call it, like the meme of Jon Lundvik finding out he's not winning Eurovision. And people think it's hilarious to see him get disappointed when he doesn't win. But I mean, <laughs> well, you know, it, it's, we shouldn't really, I think, I think it's quite harsh to like focus on people who are, um, what do you call it, disappointed uh, and then make fun of it as well. That's, that's just, that's just really rude. Mm. What else do we have? Um, the only reason why I'm scared that only Televote is being used this, in the semis this year is that Mal would have not qualified in 2018. Good point. Yeah, that would be insane. 
And like a song like Fade to Black would get zero points. No way in hell should a song like Fade to Black ever get zero points. Come on. Um, just had an interesting thought. Having only temi Telly in semi would not safe proof jury results in the finals. I mean, six countries jury votes seem biased in the semis and didn't really vote in the final. Uh, oh yeah, the, the, there's always like something about the jury votes that um, <laughs> seems a bit suspicious. Uh, ESC, Anna Bergendahl, in tears, Sweden out. Yeah, still. Um, do you wish Melfest had better representation in terms of modern Swedish hip-hop, or do you think it's not the right fit? I don't like modern Swedish hip-hop, <laughs> so um, I'm not the best person to ask. Like, hip-hop works for me when it's, like, kind of packed with a message, or it has, like, an emotional connection to it or something. There's something deep within it. But a lot of the Swedish hip-hop that's actually, you know, popular is about guns and drugs and women and it's it's just not my thing so um i don't really need that in melody festival i think we've had solid representation before um but it's not something that i that i really need to see uh unfortunately we have good good hip-hop but it's not being really showcased very well so um, Euphoria was the first ESC song I listened and I didn't even know what ESC was back then. Listening to it I thought this had to have won right and I never found out if it did or not back then. Well, you were right. It, it did win, which was amazing. Uh, in 2019 the camera could have focused on Mahmood getting second rather than Jon Lundvik being disappointed. Yeah. I mean, it, it like just that concept kind of irks me and haunts me a little bit. Just, oh, we have the two people that it's between. Let's put big cameras on their faces and we'll see which one gets happy and which one gets disappointed i mean it's it's just a concept of that i i don't really like that uh but yeah all right uh should we call it a day there uh we've talked about lithuania we've talked about melody festival and we've talked for almost two hours again these streams are so long but I, i've enjoyed making them a lot uh we'll we'll have another one soon i i can promise you that because i enjoy making it so much and i enjoy talking to you so much um, so yeah, let's let's call it uh, a day now. Get some sleep if you're not from like US or, or from from Asia and you're either in the morning or in the middle of the day. But if you're if the time is around well midnight or whatever for all of you, then uh, then uh, get some sleep if you want to, or go out paint the paint the town if if you want to. I'm not gonna do that though. But uh, yeah. Have a good one. I'm gonna close the stream after reading the final, final few comments. One of them is called Is Adriana's Amare from Mellow 2017 considered rap? No, I don't think so. Um, let's actually, uh, wait, let's close that one and I'll move myself. No, I'm messing up again. No, I, th I thought I had learned. Oh, I thought I was a good streamer, but I'm, I'm not anymore. Uh, wait, 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 wait. There we go. Big face. <laughs> uh, there we go. Looks good. Uh, no, I don't think Amare is a is a rap song. No. Um, <laughs> don't speak Swedish, so I couldn't tell. Yeah. Uh, we had a song called uh, "Vot har du vat by Aliawan, which was a which was a rap song, which which was pretty nice, but it wasn't performed very well. Um, let's see. Uh, It would be interesting to up the maximum people of stage from 6 to 10. Yeah. Yeah. Um, could be interesting. Absolutely. Uh, thank you and have a good night. Nice stream. Take care, everyone. Bye, all. Nice stream. Groot. I'm in at the end next time, maybe. <laughs> Can be like that sometimes, uh, Ali Pan. But, uh, well, <laughs> it is what it is, right? Good night. Gunat. Gunat. Today, ma. Don't worry. Your streaming abilities are better than Laurel's right. I feel a lot of shade from you, uh, Lysander, if I'm honest. Uh, we'll be curious to see what they do next year. Yeah, you've had a talk about Trondheim here. I have kind of ignored all of that because I don't know anything about it, sorry. But it feels like that's that's between you two. You're having a private discussion in here and I'll leave you to it. Uh, thank you, Groot. Be careful, though. We will get addicted to these streams for those who aren't already. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for, for coming out. It's been wonderful again. Uh, I'll uh, I will leave you now. But I will be back soon. It's of course today. France's song is released, so I have to review that. And then we got um, like a bunch of Polish songs, so we have to get through those as well. I got a lot of stuff to do <laughs> coming up. 
Uh, have a good one, everyone. Good night to, to you if you're from Europe. And uh, hope to see you soon again. Bye-bye.